Everything you just saw was shot on the iPhone X. Yo, what's up guys? If this is your first time finding me, this channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So if you're interested in gear reviews, storytelling and filmmaking tutorials like this one, then consider subscribing. So you want to start create videos, but you think you need to go out and buy a big expensive camera because you think your videos will look much better that way? I can prove you otherwise. In this video, I will show you how to unlock the full potential of your phone to create professional cinematic video using the Filmic Pro app. A couple of days ago, my friend Gabriel and I went outside to shoot that video. I used the iPhone X because that is what I'm currently using, the Filmic Pro app, which we'll get into later, and the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 to get those smooth looking shots. I literally bought that Osmo Mobile gimbal a couple of hours before the shoot. I used to have the first version of the Osmo Mobile gimbal back in 2015, but I quickly sold it because I wasn't really into mobile filming at that time. With the technology advancing in mobile phones and discovering the Filmic Pro app, it has become a game changer. I had quite fun shooting and experimenting with the phone. It came out pretty good. Of course it's good, I created it. This shows me that anyone can create a good video by just using something as simple as a phone. And if you want to take it to the next level, I suggest using the Filmic Pro app. The Filmic Pro app is great for serious video making and works for both Android and iPhone. The reason why I like this app is because there are certain limitations when using my iPhone for advanced video capturing. This app is inexpensive, well-designed, and offers maximum manual control for filming. Now with that said, let's get deeper into the app. If you want to shoot professional video with your phone, you have to learn the technical aspects and practice shooting video with your phone as much as possible. The more you do, the more these things will become second nature to you. All right, let's get into the app. I won't go over all the settings in the menu, just the ones I find important to begin with. You will find the settings icon on the lower right of the screen. Open that up to show the main menu. First, we will set our recording resolution with the aspect ratio. 16 by nine is set as a standard. If you want to upload on Instagram, you could use the one by one aspect ratio. If you choose another aspect ratio than 16 by nine, it will turn on crop source overlay. So for the shoot, I use the 2.39 by one aspect ratio with the crop source overlay turned off. I recommend turning it off because it gives you the framing guide and records the full image area outside the guides. In post, I then added the letterbox to give it that wide cinematic look. As for the resolution for normal speed, I shoot in 4K because it gives me the most detail and cinematic look. For slow motion video, I set the resolution to 1080p. Below the resolution settings, you will find four options for the recording quality. I always set it to Filmic Extreme, which gives me the highest bitrate and recording quality possible. It's important to keep in mind that the higher your resolution and bitrate, the larger your video size uh, is going to be. Next, we will select our frame rate. When I shoot in 4K, I want my frame rate to be 24 frames per second. That gives me that filmic look I'm going for. Depending on the resolution, you can choose frame rates up to 240 frames per second. For slow motion shots, I select 1080p at 60 frames per second. Even though I have the option to shoot at 120 frames per second, Filmic Pro does not support the flat picture profile for that frame rate. More to that later. You also have the option to shoot time lapse and select different intervals. For the audio settings, if you use the external mic, it should appear by default. In the video, I choose the option video only, which will record the video without audio. The presets option is really great to save your customized settings. It allows me to switch quickly between different resolutions and frame rates. Because I use the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, I recommend turning off the stabilization so that it doesn't conflict with each other. In the camera option, you can choose between different cameras. I often went with the wide camera option. Gridline is a useful tool to help get your composition right. I leave that on. So now that we have applied all the settings, we can go over to the assisting tools that Filmic Pro provides to help get your exposure and focus right. 
If you tap on the A icon on the lower left, you will find the assisting tools. The zebra stripes overlay show areas that are overexposed, which are indicated in red stripes. The clip overlay shows areas that are extremely overexposed, which are indicated in red or underexposed, indicated in blue. Always pay attention to the highlights because it can easily clip. Once that happens, it's hard to get those details back. The false color overlay is very useful if you want to analyze the overall exposure of the image. The appropriate exposure range sits around the green area. The focus peaking overlay shows objects in focus indicated in green. You also have the option to view the live histogram and waveform monitors. Just tap on the timecode area and look through them. Before I start recording, I set my white balance correctly. You will find the white balance on the bottom left with the colored circles. As a default, it is set to auto white balance. The auto white balance is accurate, but it does shift in color temperature. That is why I always set my white balance to manual. In order to do so, you could use the available white balance presets such as daytime, overcast, tungsten, and so on, which locks it automatically. Or you can use the auto white balance to find the correct value and then tap on the auto white balance icon to lock it. If you purchase the Filmic Pro Cinematographer's Kit, then you have the option to shoot in flat or log, which allows for more flexibility in the color grading process. If you are experienced, I recommend using the Log V2 Gamma Profile that will give you more dynamic range and therefore better results. Keep in mind that the flat picture profile doesn't support all frame rate. Let's now look at the exposure and focus control. You can drag around the circle to auto expose the image. If you tap on it, the exposure will lock. You generally don't want your exposure to change during recording. So after adjusting my exposure correctly, I lock it. The square focus control works the same. If you leave it unlocked, it will track the focus. If you tap on it, the focus will lock. I mostly relied on the autofocus, which worked pretty well. If you tap on the round icon on the bottom left, two dials will appear on the screen. On the left, you have the manual exposure and on the right, the focus and zoom control. You can use the exposure dial to set your ISO and tap to lock it. I keep my ISO as low as possible to get the best image quality possible. Once the ISO is locked, you can adjust the shutter speed. I normally keep my shutter speed double the frame rate for the filmic look. If you want to know more about the shutter speed, I have a tutorial on that which I will link in the video description below. If you change the shutter speed and have the assisting tools active, you will see zebras appearing showing which areas are overexposed. On the right dial, you can adjust your focus point. As I change it, you can see how the focus peaking is activated as well. This is great because this way you can monitor and adjust the exposure or focus at the same time. In order to record your video, you can tap the very right button below. To see what you have recorded, you can tap the play button to view your clips. All right, guys, that was it for the basics. There are more advanced features that I haven't gone through, but to start off, you will do fine. The best way to learn and get great shots is to practice and experiment with the app. I encourage you to go out and shoot as much as you can under different lighting conditions. Let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see next. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I would appreciate that and see you in the next video.